Let's set up our page for notes today with our horizontal and vertical lines so that we have our margins. We also need the date and topic. The topic of this video is quartiles. The essential question for today is what are quartiles and how and why do we calculate them? If you hear the word quartile, you might be able to guess what it means. In the word quartile, we have the prefix quart. It's the same prefix you hear when you hear the word quarter, right? And we know that there are four quarters in a dollar. The meaning of quart is four. That's going to be important as we try to remember what quartiles are. Right? Quart is four. Quartiles are values in math that split data, or a data set, into four equal sections. Each of these sections is a quarter of the data, right? or one-fourth of the data. Let's see how we find our quartiles and what this tells us. I'm going to turn my page and give you a set of data to work with. This data represents the number of chocolate chips in a dozen chocolate chip cookies. We want to divide the information into quartiles so we can analyze the number of chips in a typical cookie. My first step is to reorder the data from least to greatest. Go ahead and pause the video, take a minute to put the data in order, and then we can compare our lists. Do our lists look the same? Good. Now we know we want to divide the list into sections, right? Because quartiles divide our data into sections. I start by finding the middle. We already know that this is called the median. As I look for the middle number, right, I'm going to work my way in from both sides until I have one number remaining. Okay, so I'm going to start by looking from 3 to 18, 4 to 17, 4 to 16, 4 and 14. 7 and 12. I notice, since I have an even number of cookies, that there are two numbers left in the middle, my 10 and my 11. My median is halfway between 10 and 11, so my median is 10 and a half. I'm just going to put a mark there that that's the median. Right? What does this tell me? Well, it tells me that 50% or half of the cookies have ten and a half or more chocolate chips per cookie. That sounds great. It means that if I choose a cookie at random, I have a 50% chance of getting a cookie with lots of chips. I guess it also means that I have a 50% chance of getting a cookie with fewer than ten and a half chips. So far, I only have two groups. Quartiles need four, right? So let's keep going. Let's look at the first half of the data. I want to find the halfway point from the start of my data up to my median. Some people say that they're finding the median of the median. So looking at my median, I'm now going to move in from the left and right until I have one number left. Right? So I'm starting with the 3 and the 10, 4 and 7. I noticed again that I have two numbers left. This time it's a 4 and 4. Right? And the good news is that that means my middle number is also 4. I'm going to mark this middle here, right? and it is 4. We call this point the lower quartile. It marks the end of the first quartile. I'm going to put a box around here. This represents 25%, or 1 fourth, of all of the data. So 25% of the cookies are in this group. That means I have a 25% chance of grabbing a cookie with four or fewer chips. The good news is that the rest of the cookies, 75% of them, have more than four chips per cookie. Let's go back to the median. I now want to find the halfway point from the median, which was here, right, all the way to the end. I'm going to start in the middle 
and on the outside, and I'm going to move from left to right until I have one number remaining. So I'm going to go from 11 and 18, 12 and 17, and I notice again that there are two numbers left in the middle. What do you think is my halfway point? If you thought 15, then you're right. This marks the final or fourth quartile. So I'm going to write down here that this is called the upper quartile. It's the upper part of our data. What does this mean? Well, it means that 25% of the cookies have at least 15 chips. Right? So there's 25% of the cookies are here with 15 or more chips. It also means that 75% of the cookies have less than 15. I'm just going to put boxes around these sections here too to show you that by doing our three calculations we've broken our information into fourths. It makes the data easier to digest. But that was just the first go through, right? Might have been a little confusing. Let's try it one more time. I'm going to turn my page and get us a new set of data. This time, the numbers represent the time it takes a group of students to run a mile. I've already put the numbers in order from least to greatest for you. Okay, so take a moment, make sure you have those written down. And we're going to break this up into four equal sections. Let's first cut the data in half by finding the median. Hopefully you found that this time there is one number directly in the middle and that is this 11. Right? That's our median. Remember what this means. It means that 50% of the students run a mile in 11 minutes or more and 50% of the kids run the mile in 11 minutes or less. This gives up some good information, but let's break it down even further. These five numbers represent the bottom half of our data, and these five numbers represent the top half of our data. Okay. We want to now find the upper and lower quartiles, so we can break it up into fourths. With my five numbers here in the lower half, I want to find the middle number and I can see that my middle number here is 7. This is my lower quartile, right? It's the marking of the first 25 percent of my data. Over here on the upper half, I'm looking for the middle number again, and I see that my 13 is right in the middle. This represents my upper quartile right? that starts the last quarter of my data. So what does that tell us? What does that mean? Okay. That means that 25% of our kids can run a mile between 6 and 7 minutes. 25% of our kids run that same mile <clears throat> between 7 and 11 minutes. 25 are represented here and 25 are represented here. So this is broken up into quarters. The last thing that this tells us that we use a lot is where we look for the middle 50%. So there are, if we look at our data here, um, there's a 25% here in the middle and this 25%, that means this section represents half of our kids. It's our middle 50%, right? And that has a fancy name. We call that the interquartile range. That's abbreviated sometimes as the IQR. Uh, we'll revisit the IQR in another lesson. Okay. So let's think back at the essential question. This was regarding quartiles. Do we know what quartiles are? Right? They break things into four sections. Do we know how to find them and why we find them? If not, we'll want to review the video again. And be sure to write any questions you have in the margins so we can go over it in class.